the role that uh, Sergio Perez was brought into play in the team, but also it, it seems like he's a very different character to Max, more experienced, more, you know, been with more different teams, hasn't necessarily been at the front of the grid for a long time and is more used to working in the middle of the pack and, you know, looking at a P5 being a great result or the occasional podium being a great result. Do you have sort of different kind of style with, with Sergio in, in motivating him or, or does he, you know, he doesn't need that. Does he just sort of understand, understand how that performance is going to come naturally? I think, I think one of the, um, I guess one of the um, uh, things that I can bring to the team is this body of experience in dealing with drivers from all sorts of different um, backgrounds and all sorts of different uh, levels of experience. You know, we brought quite a few young drivers into the team here, I think more so than than most big teams would normally do. And, and I've, I've built a, if you like, a knowledge bank from that, how to support and, and, and help the drivers through those transitional years. Now, with Checo, completely completely different I mean, we yeah. brought in a massively more like when we brought um, Mark Webber into the team to be honest brought in a massively experienced guy huge amount of F1 experience we've learned from him it's made us stronger he's learned from us it's made him stronger and it's very difficult to make that transition to a big team from a from a small team very, yeah. very difficult. It's a, and, and understanding how to use the tools available to you and the, and, the, and the people available to you and to use them correctly and to sort of separate the wheat from the chaff. This is what um, a more experienced driver brings to a team. You know, they're, they, they know what's important out of all the information that they've gained over that run or that lap or that race. They know they focus on what is stopping them going quicker. And of course, Checo is a master at that. He knows, understands it exactly. And and I'm I'm really hoping with this change of technical regulations this year that um, that, that Checo is going to absolutely bed in with the car um, and and show us what he's really capable of. So was that something maybe you were looking for um, between seasons of, of a driver with that experience who's going to be able to point out things that maybe other people in the team haven't noticed or have an alternate perspective was that experience something you were looking for when you were considering signing Alex Albon maybe for another year or giving him a different role in the team and, and looking to bring someone in from somewhere else was that experience part of it or was it just whoever's the best option at the time it's all of those things all wrapped yep. in together um I think that uh the interesting thing with you know you want to win the constructors Constructors World Championship, not just the Drivers World Championship. So you need both drivers there. You know, I um, I think that what Checo brings with him and uh, brings to the team is this body of experience, much like I hopefully that I do. Um, and it does make us stronger. But you know, every Alex, we learned huge amount of things from Alex. We learned how to to help support uh, a younger driver who's having a difficult time. You know, um, same with Pierre before that. And Pierre, look at the confidence Pierre's got oh, again. Amazing, now yeah. Now he's back um, in, in, in a slightly smaller team. And I, th I think, honestly, Pierre's ready to make the next step up now. Yeah, but th that step, is it, do you think, going to be tough for him to leave that Red Bull system? Because it's not really an option at, at, the, at the moment. You know, it's going to have to be, well, I feel like Alpine have got Oscar Piastri lined up to replace Alonso when he goes. and on another brilliant driver is going to be hard to get rid of so it seems like a driver like Gasly who is outperforming his equipment so often though it seems like a, it's sort of lacking in, in routes for him to go because there are so many amazing drivers in the sport is there a is there actually an upward path for him or is it well, more just wait and see yeah I mean you have to wait and see what cards you're dealt like all of us you know yeah. in our ambitions what we want to do in life um I often say that I'd rather be lucky than clever, you know, and I've built a career based on luck, I think. Yeah. <laughs> you know? well, I'm very lucky that you're doing this interview, so thank you for that. I, I... Oh, yeah, there you go, you see, maybe it's rubbed off, but, you know, I think if you look at my career, I started out as a mechanic, I've ended up running a Formula One team and winning world championships with that Formula One team, and I've been very lucky, I've been involved in eight championship seasons which have resulted in a world championship. And, and if you count up the individual drivers and constructors championships, I've won 14. Now there's a lot of people in this business 
um, who might have been in the sport forever and have never got a pole position, never yeah. got a race win, let alone a championship. And so if you then look at drivers, you're in exactly the same position. It comes down to the brakes. I mean, you, you make your own luck, but it comes down to the brakes.